much, Congressman Van Hollen. I'd like to thank the speakers again and our panelists. And um, I know that these folks are going to be, uh, Marianne will be around for a little bit longer. Um, and Tommy, if you can stay, that's great too. But one more round of applause and uh, a big thank you to Congressman Van Hollen, Congressman Connolly. What a morning. <laughs> Uh, it is my privilege to welcome to the podium Larry Schwager. The Chesapeake Bay and the region have a long held special place in his heart. From a home enjoyed in Maryland's Kent Island, Larry developed a deep appre appreciation for the natural beauty and outstanding recreational opportunities offered by the Bay. Larry's deep concern about the future of the Chesapeake Bay from his time in Maryland and more importantly his time in Pennsylvania continues to guide him in his post as President and CEO at the National Wildlife Federation. So it is altogether fitting that Larry introduce our keynote speaker of the conference, Senator Ben Cardin. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Schwager. Thank you, and it's a great privilege to be here among so many great conservation leaders in the Chesapeake Bay region, and I want to compliment each and every one of you for your willingness to work together to solve a problem that is much bigger than any one of us. Uh, so it's, uh, it's my uh, privilege uh, to be here today. I also want to say a very special thank you to all the members of the uh, Council, of Congress, and of various uh, state uh, legislatures and others who have been here today and, and throughout this conference. Uh, it is clearly a, a time for us to look to our elected leaders at every post uh, to make a difference for the Chesapeake Bay. Maryland has had a wonderful history of senatorial leadership uh, on the Chesapeake Bay. I think back fondly to the days of Senator Mac Mathias and the great work that he has done. And I'm so pleased today that we have a senator from Maryland who is his is committed uh, to the same cause. Uh, Senator Ben Cardin has been a national leader on the environment, on health care, retirement security, fiscal issues, and many other uh, major issues uh, since he first came to Congress in 1987. He served in the House of Representatives from that time until 2006 and in 2007 was sworn into the Senate. Uh, where he serves uh, on the uh, Environment and Public Works Committee and chairs the Water and Wildlife Subcommittee. Uh, in 2008, he received a 100% rating from the League of Conservation Voters. Uh, and that's a great accomplishment. <clears throat> Supporting the Chesapeake Bay has been one of Senator Cardin's, uh, Cardin's signature issues. He authored a bill that he will, I'm sure, talk about that reduces pollution and improves the health of the Bay through strong enforcement tools and more than $1.5 billion in new grant authority uh, to clean up the Bay. Uh, the bill also establishes flexible pollution trading program that lowers compliance costs and provides the Bay watershed farmers with incentives to uh, implement conservation practices on their land. Uh, in 2008, uh, Senator Cardin secured a $1.7 million in federal funding for the Chesapeake Gateway Waterways, gateway, Gateways and Water Trails uh, legislation that linked natural beauty, history, and cultural richness, richness of the Chesapeake Bay. I, I should also uh, say, most importantly, he has um, led efforts to modernize and revigor reinvigorate America's clean water laws. He authored the Water Infrastructure Financing Act, which will authorize uh, nearly $35 billion over the next five years for much needed wastewater and drinking water upgrades around the country. And I, I would also say that uh, Senator Cardin uh, comes at uh, the environment with the sense that uh, we should be fighting no little battles. And one of the important battles that he is fighting for the Chesapeake Bay, for this country, and for this world is his effort on climate change. You know, when you add uh, warming waters to high nutrient loads, you end up with increased anoxic and hypoxic waters. And uh, we're seeing an average of a one uh, degree increase in the oceans down to 60 meters. But that does not translate to the bay. It actually is a much uh, worse condition because we're talking about very shallow waters. Uh, we're also looking at sea level rises. If you look at the 2007 IPCC report, it suggested we'd see a three-foot rise in sea level. Since that time, two studies are now uh, showing that we'll see about a six-foot rise in sea level by the end of this century if we continue doing what we're doing today. 
Imagine what six foot does to this city, imagine what it does to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, Senator Cardin has been a champion of the legislation, starting with the uh, Lieberman-Warner legislation, and uh, today is also actively involved in advancing the, the Clean Energy Jobs and American Power Act, which is the Senator Kerry, Boxer, and Lieberman uh, bill that will tackle climate change. We know we need to get this bill passed. It also provides, I should tell you, funding for adaptation, which will also include money for the Chesapeake Bay. So it's a vitally important issue and I'm so thankful that Senator uh, Cardin has been uh, one of the great leaders. And I welcome to the podium Senator Cardin, Yay. Senator Maryland. Thank Larry. Larry, thank you very much. Well, hold on. It's good to be here with friends. Let me. Uh, Wow, it's good to be with friends. <laughs> I don't get that type of response at my town hall meeting, so it's a. <laughs> it really is good to be here with friends. First, Larry, thank you for what you do every day to help our environment, to help our future. I, I, I want to. Um, first, uh, I know you all paid money to be here, so thank you. <laughs> Listen to us. Um, normally, I can't get people to show up, but to pay money to show up is a. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for being so involved in, in our future. I, I just want to just underscore how important our coalition is. Chris Van Hollen, you heard from Chris, and Chris was very modest when he talked about the farm bill. Farm bill is not easy to pass under any arrangements because of the special interest in the agricultural community. And I'm starting to run about that right now when it comes to the Bay Bill. But Chris Van Hollen took on the leadership in the Farm Bill to do something that was truly unique, to provide a conservation program for the Chesapeake Bay in the Farm Bill, $400 million. And he got it done. Now we worked together as a team, but he was the one who devised the strategy to make it happen. Give Chris Van Hollen the recognition he deserves on that landmark legislation in the Farm Bill. And, and Jerry Connolly, Jerry Connolly, as a local official, took on the developers. I don't like to say it that way. He worked with the developers. <laughs> and he sort of explained how being the, doing the right policy for our environment will be the right policy for our economy. And, and he was able to be very effective as a local official on the right policies to protect our bay. And he's taken that passion to the United States Congress and is one of the strongest proponents of doing the right thing, not only in Virginia, but in the entire region to protect our bay for our future. Give Jerry Connolly another round. He's one of our true leaders in the United States Congress on these issues. We need these champions. And, and, and our local officials, I, I want to, you know, Mary Ann Lasanti, I've known for a long time, and she's explained to me the Susquehanna. She knows it better than anyone else. She's been fighting that issue up in Hartford County, and I, I love her dearly for her passion on these issues. You really should spend an afternoon with her, because I'll tell you, you'll really appreciate the importance of the Susquehanna and the, the Bay by being with her for a day. Tom Wells, who does a great job in the district, this is not an easy jurisdiction to represent the district. They have a lot of problems. And you don't always think about you don't always think about the Chesapeake Bay when you're in the nation's capital. He does. We have two of our great heroes in local government because this is a team effort. We need the local governments. We need the councils. We need the state legislatures. And we need the Congress of the United States. And we have two great leaders here with us on this panel. Thank you both for all you do on the Bay. Yeah. And I could go on the Bay. Yeah. And I could go.